All right, hello everyone. Welcome back to the project. So I just want to do a quick recap of where we are in terms of the chlorination. So this is all to do the same chlorination of taking isobutene plus chlorine gas to make methyl chloride and the byproduct of HCl gas. So the first time we did it, we tried pumping chlorine gas through liquid isobutene. This had a lot of problems that we sort of identified. The biggest problem, of course, was the fact that it was just a lot of work because we needed dry ice because this needed to be like, you know, minus eight degrees or whatever. And we needed dry ice for that, and that was a lot of work for me to get. And the other problems also identified was the fact that it was done under really intense UV light. There was a lot of sunlight when I did it. The fact that it was in the liquid phase kind of opened up to a lot of other reactions, like addition of the uh, HCl to the double bond, and the fact that it was solvent because um, this was done with, in DCM, and that was identified as potentially an issue too because it gave us a longer time it needed to be heated for, and also the fact that we could have steam, steam distilled off, we carried over a small amount of product with the solvent and that sort of thing. So there was a lot of issues with it. So we, we, we had some thinking, and then we came up with a new design, which was we um, tried to react the two gases together in the gas phase. So we did this at room temperature, so the isobutene was a gas, and we had this huge glass two-litre container, which is underwater, and the gases would collect together and mix up there. And we could see some sort of organic liquid forming, but once again, we identified a lot of issues with this. The main one, of course, and pretty much everyone sort of thought this was going to be quite an issue, was that there was a lot of water in this setup. So um, this whole uh, gas phase area is just absolutely saturated with water vapor. Over chlorination too, because um, when our gases mixed and formed the liquid, it would float on top of the liquid there. And then the only way we could collect it was when it, for some reason, sunk. So what we think is that fact that maybe it's sitting on top of the liquid there, there's more chlorine coming out, reacting with the liquid further. It's finally, you know, it's destroying that double bond and then the liquid falls down and then we collect it down here. And that's not what we wanted. In both cases, we got basically the same product, it seems, a liquid that boiled it about 150 degrees um, methyl chloride should boil you know somewhere in 60 to 70 so you know definitely not our product so some more good work in the comments uh, once again to try and determine what to do with this reaction um, once again piranha helped identify that potentially the water is a big issue and gave some reference for that so thanks for that but i like to say today's setup comes from i'm going to say this wrong because i'm fairly sure he's french um and emil s a scood. Yeah, I, I got it wrong. 100% I got it wrong. Um, but yes, go look at his channel. He's got some great videos there. They're all in French, but you know, still good chemistry. Um, <laughs> and he did a similar reaction where he chlorinated um, ethene. It was quite a complicated setup and he mentioned it a while ago and I kind of looked at it and thought, oh shit, that's a bit too complicated. But now after the failure of this, this is just a schematic of kind of what we want to do is we want to react um, dry chlorine, so we've got to dry it somehow, and also dry isobutene, and then they'll react, and then we really want our product to be removed from this system. So we don't want it to be sitting around in the chlorine. It looks very simple in this diagram, but let's go and try and build a setup that um, does this, and I don't think it's gonna be very easy, but um, go clean some glassware, I guess. finished setup and um, I think you can appreciate when I say this is the uh, most complicated setup I've done before. So let's run through it. What we have here is our isobutene setup. We've got the sulfuric acid there um, adding the tertiary butanol through the side. I was not going to add any tertiary butanol yet but I did the thing where you add you know you add your product to the addition funnel but you forget to close the stopcock so we just ran through straight into the sulfuric acid but that's fine it didn't all explode so everything's okay so this apparatus is now slowly filling up with isobutene so it comes through here this is once again acting as the air condenser less than ideal but once again I only have one pump so isobutene comes out goes through this hose goes through here this is some sulfuric acid which is uh, looking like it's getting sucked back um, I don't really actually really need it to dry the isobutene because it should really come over pretty dry but really it's acting there as 
kind of a flow rate monitor because otherwise I have no way of knowing if anything is actually coming through because if that was connected directly to the apparatus, I'd just assume it was filling full of gas. But I can look at this and go, oh, well, actually, no, it's doing the opposite of filling full of gas. Um, how do I stop it doing that? Ooh, aggressive. So it comes down here, comes in through this inlet. This is obviously less than perfect, but um, I needed a, like a three-way joint here with like two female ends and a male joint. And I just, there's not a piece of glassware that I have or I know of that is kind of like that. Oh, well, I mean, it's just another Kleisen adapter, I guess, is what I needed. But here I was two weeks ago, I never even used a Kleisen adapter, and here I am needing two of them. The gas comes in here through the vacuum takeoff adapter and just goes through there. Um, this whole, this like point isn't actually involved at all because it's shut off from the from the thing but I just sealed it anyway and the duct tape is just because it's actually being held upside down we got a cat clip and a duct tape so it's not going to slide off because I was worried that was just going to fall off it goes up this is the 20 centimeter Liebig I was going to use the 30 centimeter or the 40 centimeter Liebig I have but the apparatus was just getting too tall at that point and it was just ridiculous so the 30 centimeter looks really dirty but that's just all the stuff on the inside because it's like five years old and I've just continually used it for forever. It comes up to our Kleisen adapter and then our all-in condenser which is going to be running very cold water through it. Here, this is where the chlorine comes in. So the chlorine is generated over here. Um, it's in a bucket because I only have three stands and four clasps. Clamps? Clamps, not clasps. The three stands Yes, three, one, two, three, and four clasps. So I don't have another stand to hold this, so it's in the bucket. And I don't have another pressure equalizing addition funnel, which would be preferable for this um, thing, but we're just gonna use a set funnel here to add the chlorine, add the, add the acid to the TCCA, which is in the flask here. Comes out, goes through some more sulfuric acid here, which is needed to dry the chlorine. Comes out here. This um, hose didn't fit very well, so I've just cable tied it on both ends. This tap is very useful here because I can shut it off now and let this bit fill with isobutene while um, letting it open up when we have the chlorine later on so we're not forming any methyl chloride you know in this hose or you know with the sulfuric acid. Hopefully just forming here uh, methyl chloride. So the reason this whole setup is like this is the idea is that a methyl chloride will form basically here in this Kleisen adapter um, if it gets too hot It'll get condensed down in our all in condenser. It'll run down here. Um, hopefully, there's not too much chlorine in this part of the system. Um, and the methyl chloride will just come down, drip down, and come into this set funnel. Then occasionally, we can just tap off and, and get our methyl chloride out of there so it doesn't over chlorinate because I think over chlorination is a big issue as well. Um, and because the chlorine inlet is so far removed from where the methyl chloride is, like instead of just having a flask, I could have had a flask at the bottom, you know, a three neck flask with two inputs and a condenser on the top of it. But then I thought the chlorine is there basically where the methyl chloride is, which is, you know, what's gonna to lead to overchlorination. So this way we can remove our product really from the chlorine source. Mm. So hopefully the methyl chloride will drip down fast enough to not really further react with the chlorine should be all right it's just very complicated and i mean i haven't used the right tubing the tubing isn't going to be resistant to the chlorine but it should last enough for this run through but unfortunately i've run it very late because it took me about five hours to set this up you know on and off because you know i try and do other things with my day as well i shouldn't have i should have just focused on this because now it's like 6 p.m and i'm just starting the experiment so it's good that we're kind of in here so we're out of the direct sunlight also, night time, there'll be less UV, so that, I guess that's a plus. But um, the filming is going to be a bit bad because lighting is going to be very bad as well. Hopefully, we get some product out of this whole setup. Uh, we've got lots of ice in the water bath. The answer is cold, some isobutane coming through, there's a lot of suck back, but I can just keep fighting that. That's not too much of an issue. Well, I mean it is, but I don't know how to get around it. We've got the TCCA going, the hydrochloric acid. Let's um, let's just start putting some chlorine in and see if we get anything at all happening. Uh, 
every so often see a little wisp of smoke come out the top of the condenser, which is promising on a few fronts, but also the fact that it kind of implies that at least all the gas is going through the system. It's not like just leaking out at some point. The smoke is, is good because we expect the sort of hydrochloric acid byproduct to be a bit mist-like, I guess. Uh, but still not much happening. But we're only 10 minutes in, so, you know, we've got a lot of system to flush out. All right, it is working kind of. You can see this is covered in little tiny droplets. We're making progress, but it's been about 40 minutes, so this is very slow. But it does seem to be reacting where we want it to be. I'd expect it to, when it's actually properly reacting, heat up the glass wherever it's reacting quite a lot. If it's hot, you know, down in the isobutene outlet, which is down the bottom, um, we know we really should be putting more isobutene in. All right, it's now about two hours since we started the gas flow. And things have been going really slowly, and I don't know why. So what I've done, well, what I think the blame is, is just the really slow generation of the isobutene. So I've put in quite a bit more sulfuric acid, you know, hard for me to make and expensive, but, you know, we've just got to start throwing things at this project. Really started to try and, you know, pump up this um, sulfuric acid generation. Um, what's with that flask? What's it doing? Sorry, I just noticed that in the last... What's it doing? What is that doing? What do you think you're doing? Yeah, anyway, what I was meant to be updating you on was the fact that I've had, this has all been like looking promising for quite a while, but not quite really taking off and running down. I will investigate further and report back. Well, I think I might have totally fixed it. All of a sudden, we've got all this liquid forming here and, and everything, and it's working perfectly. Oh, look, and it's dripping down. I mean, short of me actually putting tertiary butanol in just directly into the flask, what's, what I've done is I decided that maybe the um, isobutene is, is getting absorbed or reacting with the sulfuric acid in that flask, which is why it's making that weird colour. So I just, I just diverted it, and all of a sudden, when I put this into the flask, all of a sudden it just, like, it took off. So I've just had, like, three and a half hours of nothing, just because uh, it looks like all my gas has been... Pumping into there. Right, so this is a procedure I've been following. Um, so we put a little bit of isobutene, a little of tertiary butanol in there. That'll generate quite a bit of isobutene. That'll flow into the flask. We should be sort of be able to see some sort of faint smoke. Oh, it's coming. You see that coming out of there. Ah, oh, see, that's better. See, that's what I wanted the whole time. See, that's the HCl fumes coming out of there. And then what we do is, because this is not a pressurized equalizing addition funnel, um, we try and get some hydrochloric acid into the flasks down there. Yep, there's a bit in there. And now we can open up this section here, flood this section with chlorine. Ah, see? Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Let me close it. So I over chlorinate it. Oh, why didn't I get it working like this all along? It's, it's sort of semi continuous, but it stops me sort of just putting chlorine continually into it. You can see chlorine flowing in the flask now. And shut it up. And the reason we sort of put the pressure in the line, um, you know, put the acid into the TCCA, creates a bit of pressure. So then we open this, um, we form everything in here. We don't um, have the, the isobutene as a positive pressure, which would force the stuff up here and, and form our methyl chloride in the line. So that's why we build up the positive pressure in here first. Um, with the line shut at the acid and then and then so and then it all mixes in here Ah, see now this has got really warm Wow, so the whole time it was the sulfuric acid my stupid flow rate monitor All right, we're drawing to a close. I've added all the tertiary butanol. Uh, that was 25 mils um, since I got it working. I added 50 mils of tertiary butanol um, before we got it working. So we really just wasted those 50 mils. This is our yield here. 
um, which I think is, is quite reasonable and definitely enough to distill. Um, so I won't make too many predictions because last time I got very excited before we measured the boiling point and then we measured the boiling point and it was not the product we want at all. But I've got to say, in all my years of doing experiments, I've never had an experiment turn around as dramatically as this one has. I spent the first three hours, you know, 50 mils of, re of tertiary butanol, absolutely nothing. And then I changed one subtle thing. I took, I decided to take this out. And that was out of one variable out of a whole lost lot of other things I, I could have decided to change. And it worked like, I, you know, I don't know if it's actually worked, but it worked exactly how I thought it would. You know, the chlorine mixed here, we could monitor how the different gases with the HCl coming off. Didn't break my phone, it's fine. You could see the mixing here, and this bit of glassware got really hot, and nowhere else did. We've got a tiny bit here, but I think this is just sort of near the end when we're, you know, we're running out of isobutene and there's been an excess of chlorine. So apart from that scrubber, everything worked. Tomorrow we get to distill this. Hope there's there's a good amount to distill, which is great. <laughs> to decide if we can finally move on with our lives from this one experiment. Right, here we are the next day, big pile of glassware that I have to clean, not looking forward to it. We've just got a simple distillation set up. I'll put the hot water in there. Um, it doesn't smell as bad as previous ones have been. Um, definitely a lot less sharp, so I don't know what that means. Won't read it too much into it. <laughs> Let's just do the experiment, I guess. We're just distilling it into one of these vials um, because um, it's better than creating more glassware for me to clean later on. It's actually boiling. All right, we just had a disaster. Absolute disaster here. Clamp fell apart as I was trying to change from hot water bath to oil bath. Fuck. So I gotta fucking clean up this mess now. I don't really care about spilling the oil bath. I mean, oil is whatever. And we didn't break any glassware. So, you know, that's all right. But the issue was really that we got some of the oil actually into the flask. I don't know how I managed it, but it happened. And so, very annoyed about that. I was just lowering this because I had to take out that hot water bath and put in that wheel bath. And this is a different boss head than I normally use in this connection at the back. Is not as good as it, the other ones. Well, it's just a bit different and it just slipped out. So this hit the oil bath and it flipped it and the wheel got into there and whatever, whatever. The fact that I was changing out the water bath for oil, oil bath tells you that it really wasn't boiling. It just started bubbling a little as if there was, you know, one, two percent methyl chloride in there. Yeah, just like last time, really just got to rule out and say it's not my heating method that's the problem. It's just the fact that this, the liquid has a much higher boiling point than what is um, expected. So it's not our product. Not the outcome I wanted this morning. Went to bed last night feeling very confident. But, uh, yeah. So oil bath temperature is 150 or so and things are starting to sort of nearly start boiling over. You can see the vapour front there. Alright, so we have some of the liquid we poured out before the distillation and we have some liquid after the distillation. So I'm starting to feel in my mind that we can blame the distillation perhaps. So we're gonna check the density. We just have some uh, distilled water here and I'll add a small amount of each of them. And remembering that methyl chloride has a density just less water. So if it's methyl chloride or something similar, it should float. So they both do about the same thing really. Um, you can sort of see that there's liquid at the bottom but there's also a layer on the top there kind of have a density just a little bit more than one so a lot of it gets stuck on the top of the layer there unless there's two different substances in both of them but yeah so there's not really too much difference in density so here we have just a final test so i have some methanol some of the pre-distilled substance and some of the stuff we distilled over and just in some hot water and then there's a little bit of sand in each of the tubes and we can see clearly that the methanol is boiling very readily um, whereas these two aren't doing anything because our product uh, it should boil at 62 to 64, which is um, 
you know, the same as methanol. So it's not a measuring device or anything. It's just nice to compare it to a known standard like that and see that there's absolutely nothing in either of the, these two. So every single attempt we've done, all three of these have given us the same product, which is, I have to say at this point, has to be the overchlorinated product. I can't see there being any other option. Some literature about how the methyl chloride can dimerize and like further polymerize, but that's with real intense UV radiation and also radical catalysts, of which we have neither of the two. I mean, we have some sunlight, but they're talking like exposure to a, an unfiltered mercury lamp with 1% tetraethyl lead over 120 hours, this paper did it, and they still only got 75% dimerization, so they're still able to recover. Oh, I'm not sure the maths works out, but they recovered 16% methyl chloride after all that. So to suggest that we're making methyl chloride and then somehow polymerizing and dimerizing it by heating it to 60 degrees for about two or three minutes just doesn't stand. In terms of chlorinating uh, isobutene with the chlorine gas, I think we have to call it a day for this one. I'm still keen on the project, and we just gotta think of better ways of doing it. And I know you guys have suggestions, and I'll go back to the literature, I guess, even though it failed us this time. Uh, see what we can do with better options to try and, and, and get past this <laughs> second step. We've done a lot of hours of stuff to try and get past the second step, but we'll get there. We totally will get there. Now I suppose it's time to clean all this shit up. Not looking forward to it, but ah, shouldn't be that hard. It's not really caked on stains. Or anything like that except maybe here and here and here and don't know what to do about that and mold and here and all right now nah, okay this is this is going to be great